Hello everyone. This is a short Good Friday act of worship for members of Sleaford Methodist Circuit or anyone else who is watching. I'm going to begin with a, a passage from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 27, verse 32. As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry Jesus's cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking him, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the King of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now and we will believe him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now if he wants to. For he said, I am God's son. The bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, this man is calling on Elijah. At once, one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. Please join in with the hymn. I will sing it quite softly so as not to put you off, but I encourage you to sing loudly and in a prayerful way. Just I go out but lost, I 
Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we cannot fully understand the depth of your pain, the depth of your sacrifice, the wonder of your love. We can only stand at the foot of the cross in awe and amazement at what you were prepared to do for us. Help us this day to remember what you went through, plumbing the depths of agony and the depths of despair to save us. Lord, to you be praise and glory and honour and majesty for ever and ever. Amen. It's not easy to imagine what a defective hot cross button might look like, but I have one right here. It's not terribly defective. I'm sure it will taste perfectly fine, but you'll notice the, the cross isn't terribly well done. This was one of four purchased from a, a local supermarket which shall remain unnamed. And this was the best of the four. The others were even worse than this. Uh, it doesn't help me illustrate what I wanted to illustrate about the cross. So instead, I shall resort to the palm cross. A very simple illustration. The normal picture of the cross involves an upright and a horizontal. But you can, if you wish, turn it slightly to one side and you have a, a different kind of cross. And it's this kind of cross that I just want to spend a moment or two thinking about because the places that you see this cross will help you understand much more about this cross, the cross of Jesus Christ. There are three places that you might see a cross printed. One is uh, on a test paper, a series of questions and answers uh, and the correct questions will be marked with a tick, but the, the incorrect answers will be marked with a cross. The cross in this instance means it's gone wrong somewhere. This is not how it should be. Cross means wrong. Well, in one sense, the cross of Jesus was very definitely something drastically wrong because you don't normally crucify the Son of God. You shouldn't do that for all kinds of reasons. But at a deeper level than that, the cross of Jesus reminds us there's something deeply and fundamentally wrong with the world. We are not a perfect world, far from it. There is lots of good and beauty, but we are far from perfect. And it was because the world is in such a mess, because of sin and misery and suffering, that Jesus went to the cross. He died for our sins. There are different ways that one can interpret that simple sentence and I know some people find a, a particular interpretation helpful and others less so. For myself I think there are many ways, helpful and otherwise, of looking at that simple idea that Jesus died for us, for our sins. It was because something was wrong with the way the world is, something was wrong with the way we are doing things, that Jesus had to die. This was not God telling us off. This was an acknowledgement that there is fundamentally a problem that needs sorting out. So the cross means there's something wrong. How is it going to be sorted out? Well, that brings me to the second sort of cross, and that you might find at the bottom of a letter particularly a letter to someone that you really love. And it's a, a kiss, yes, but deeper than that, it means I love you. 
it's a way of expressing your affection for a person. The cross of Jesus is God's way of saying, I love you. It's God reminding us that he loved the world so much, he was willing to give his only son, that the depth of what Jesus went through, the agony and the suffering, shows the extent of his love for us. The cross is very much uh, a symbol of love as Jesus gave himself for us. But there's a third place that you might put a cross and that's on a, a ballot paper. You have a list of candidates and the cross is the one you choose. The one that you say, this is where my vote goes. This is who I want to align myself with. This is the person that I want to back. This is the person I want to support. And we mark that with a cross. The cross of Jesus is our opportunity to say, we support you, Jesus. Of all the possibilities that we could deal with in life, of all the things we could do, all the people we might follow, all the philosophies that we might take to heart, we want to go your way. We want to follow you. This is the meaning of the cross as a vote. It is our opportunity to align ourselves with what Jesus is doing. It's not just a historical fact, the crucifixion. It is an opportunity for us to say our yes. It's a mark that something is fundamentally wrong that needs sorting out. It's a sign of God's love for us but it's an opportunity for us to say we want to die with Christ and be raised with Christ to new life. That's our choice today. I want to finish with a reading from a book called Prayers of Life by Michelle Coist. It's uh, part of a, a series at the end of the book where we look at the, the 14 traditional stations of the cross and station number 12 is Jesus dies on the cross and I, I'd like to finish with this and I will say no more after it this is the last thing I want to read last thing I want to say after this video's over pause a moment and then go on with life a few hours more a few minutes more, a few instants more. For 33 years it has been going on. For 33 years you have lived fully, minute after minute. You can no longer escape now. You are there at the end of your life, at the end of your road. You are at the last extremity, at the edge of a precipice. You must take that last step the last step of love, the last step of life that ends in death. You hesitate. Three hours are long, three hours of agony, longer than three years of life, longer than 30 years of life. You must decide, Lord. All is ready around you. You are there motionless, on your cross. You have renounced all activity other than embracing these crossed planks for which you were made. And yet there is still life within your mortal body. Let mortal flesh die and make way for eternity. Now life slips from each limb one by one finding refuge in his still beating heart, immeasurable heart, overflowing heart, heart heavy as the world, the world of sins and miseries that it bears. Lord, one more effort. Humankind is there, waiting unknowingly for the cry of the Saviour. Your brothers are there, they need you. Your Father, bends over you, already holding out his arms. Lord, save us. Save us. 
see. He has taken his heavy heart and slowly, laboriously, alone between heaven and earth, in the awesome night with passionate love, he has gathered his life. He has gathered the sin of the world and in a cry he has given all. Father, into thy hands I commit my spirit. Christ has just died for us.